We've been happy to let the Batman clean up our streets for us until now. Things are worse than ever! Yes, they are. The night is dark is just before the dawn. A couple of weeks ago, I did the creative equivalent of sobbing in a corner for 36 minutes. I, uh, I didn't love Gotham Knights, let's put it that way, and uh, to put it a different way, that game deserves to burn in the white hot fires of hell, but you know what? On to bigger and better things, hopefully. Playing a superhero game with your friends is the dream, dude, or even by yourself with a high level of carnage, just messing around, shooting bad guys, using your super moves, causing mayhem, and fighting villains, and yet, whether it's a long-running IP or something brand new, I feel like we haven't been able to crack the formula here. Gotham Knights, Avengers, Avengers, even Crackdown 3, we get these promises of seamless co-op and single player experiences where you get to fly around and feel like a superhero with all your friends and then the game comes out and at best it's a flat glob of nondescript blunt combat that you get through on autopilot and at worst it's an unplayable mess that can't keep up with any of its promises. So... Let's fall for some of those promises again, shall we? My entire faith on whether this game format can work anytime soon hinges on Suicide Squad. It has so many of the right pieces in place to the point that if it sucks, I'm just gonna be convinced that this whole concept is undoable. Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League needs to be good. Luckily, I think it will be. <laughs> also, uh, this video contains spoilers for Arkham Knight. I think right away Suicide Squad separated itself from its running mate in Gotham Knights in terms of pure production value. I understand that these are CGI trailers, but even when we were shown in-engine story stuff and later gameplay, it basically knocked its little Warner brother into a river and drowned it in a lake. Yes, you heard that right, two separate incidents. The reveal trailer felt very Sunset Overdrive-esque, and Metropolis looks like an actual place that you'd want to explore, which is a huge deal. I've said it a hundred times, but Gotham City is really the heart of Arkham Knight. It feels like the glue that holds that game together. It's so well realized and sleek and dark, and they went even more comic booky with this new city. A Rocksteady game with actual color is still sorta of hard to wrap your head around, but they really nailed the look of this semi-futuristic alternate reality. I really came down on Gotham Knights for having this glow stick, Disneyland looking aesthetic that seemed like a bad filter on a generic city, nothing stood out. But even in this one shot of Metropolis, you have buildings of actual different shapes and sizes, destroyed bridges, billboards, murals, and oh yeah, the big metal head in the middle of everything. The personality and liveliness of Metropolis burst out of this screen without feeling overdone, and right off the bat that helps convince me that this game might actually have something in the chamber. None of these other games, even from storied and quality developers, have ever, in their marketing or after release, displayed this level of imagination at this scale. It's pretty clear that we've graduated to the big leagues now, which is a great first sign. I mean seriously, look at this and tell me it doesn't look like a fun ass place to get into some shenanigans. Maybe the most exciting thing about this game though is its potential for world building. This is a continuation of the Arkhamverse from the same developers, and they went 0 to 100 with it. It's not just bad. Batman and his rogues gallery anymore, now it's four main playable characters, the Justice League with Superman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, and the Flash confirmed, plus you got Brainiac, the Penguin is back, Ivy is back possibly, which is confusing because she suffered from uh, not living any more disease in Arkham Knight, but hey, what do I know, I'm not a scientist. And even stuff like LexCorp has shown up in the marketing, not to mention stuff that Rocksteady might be playing close to the chest, like Aquaman or even Batman. We do see some kind of Batmobile and some of his gadgets in one of the trailers, so that's not impossible. Now, this could be Bruce returning as Batman despite the end of Arkham Knight where he got, um, exploded. Because while it's never been confirmed, the true ending of that game does imply that he maybe killed off his Bruce Wayne persona to embrace the Batman and was using fear toxin infused tactics now. But it could also be a successor, like Dick Grayson who had his own great runs in the comics after Bruce's death. It could also just be a straight up random person who got their hands on a Bat vehicle, or it might be a thing for you to drive around. I mean, they have the Batmobile traversal from Arkham Knight, so might as well use it, but the sheer number of directions they can go is exciting. And you can say the same thing about the story itself. Not only is the stage set for so many characters and a massive expansion of the concepts in the Arkhamverse, but it also feels like a narrative that's primed to bring in a lot of subversive elements and big twists. The first of which is obviously Wonder Woman's role in all of this. She doesn't have the same purple brainiac demon eyes as everybody else in the league, and while there is a scene of her lassoing Captain Boomerang, lucky, she's also shown going toe to toe with Superman, and even taking on the demonic enemies that are rampaging around Metropolis. In the Justice League vs Suicide Squad comic, Batman's actually able to avoid being mind controlled and is the one who runs the squad and shows them how to deal with all the members of the Justice League since he's known to have a contingency plan for all of them in case things go south. And it looks like Diana might be taking on that role here, maybe not as the mastermind, but as part of the muscle of the group. People have endlessly made fun of the fact that there's literally no way in hell that the Suicide Squad could take on any member of the Justice League, but with the right plan of attack, it becomes a bit more believable that they'd be able to do it with Wonder Woman at their side. Although I do hope that Bruce also comes back and ends up in that same comic role because I think somehow outsmarting the Justice League is the only 
only chance you have, and he's the only character that could believably know how to do that. It could set up a really interesting dynamic that maybe starts feeling a little bit close to injustice, admittedly, but you could actually dig into the emotional side of these characters and realistic conflicts this time around instead of the over-the-top nuclear warheads to the face of injustice. Speaking of the characters though, one thing I am a bit more reserved on is whether Rocksteady can avoid the sheer amount of corn that the Suicide Squad can produce. It's a very, very fine line between snarky banter and annoying wannabe edgelord BS, and I'm still on the fence with this adaptation. None of the dialogue has made my eyes roll so far into the back of my head that I see my brain shoot itself in the face so far, which is good, but I also don't think it's landed all that well either. Maybe a couple of moments so far have done the job, but generally I think the jury's still out with this. The dialogue that we have seen is another thing that reminds me of Sunset Overdrive a little. I don't think that game was nearly as funny as it thought it was, but also it was trying and it wasn't painfully unfunny, so I at least appreciated the vibe it set. I am very happy that they managed to make the characters feel distinct though, again something that Gotham Knights had an unbelievably hard time figuring out how to do. I'm sorry, okay, I don't mean to keep harping on the game, except uh, I hate it and it sucks, so I immediately rescind that apology and will continue to make fun of it with no shame. Deadshot, Boomerang, Harley, and King Shark all feel like different people, people that we've seen before, maybe slightly watered down and generic, so far, kinda, to be honest, but at least they have personalities and the ability to have actual conversations. I'm also really excited to see how each Justice League member is gonna act. They gave us a big deep dive into The Flash recently, and he seems like a real standout, not just some cookie cutter mwahaha villain, you know? And his voice actor, I actually noticed, is the same one who plays a certain character from Ragnarok. I won't say who because we're still in the general spoiler sphere of that game, but listen to his voice and his attitude, and if you played that game, you'll definitely know who I mean. Really? Why don't you just mail me the bullet? The game also doesn't seem like it's playing around with these Justice League members either. They taunt you, meet you head on, Flash is creating tornadoes and prepping speed force kamehamehas. I can only imagine what some of the others will sound like and the set pieces and fights you'll have with them. The diversity in personalities also seems to actually carry over into gameplay as well. Not to put everything in terms of previous games, but where I think Avengers messed up by making the characters feel too different and therefore kind of spreading their combat designers a little bit thin, and where Gotham Knights made everyone feel very similar with light tweaks, Suicide Squad looks like it has a better middle ground. Getting around and fighting with every character looks drastically different, but they all have a similar backbone. King Shark is a brawler, Deadshot is a sharpshooter, Boomerang is a tool junkie, and Harley is a jack of all trades, but each one is still equipped with long range and short range weapons, AoE attacks like explosives or souped up flaming jetpacks, and unique modes of traversal to match their playstyle. King Shark looks really direct and brutish, which is to be expected, he can leap around the city, run up walls, and apparently even sports dual cleavers at some point. And I really like how they were able to create a long range character character and Deadshot that still makes sense in a fast-paced, constantly moving environment by just giving him a jetpack. You're still able to stay back and snipe at dudes, occasionally ducking in for one of seemingly multiple special moves, but you're also not static. You can actually move around the city as easily as everybody else while still staying at a range. Personally, I gotta say that Harley Quinn and Captain Boomerang look like the most appealing to me. Harley's spider manning around, attaching herself to these drones, it looks like you'll be able to duck in and out of melee and range combat even more seamlessly than the rest, her animations look awesome, and Captain Boomerang, who knew he'd look like the most fun to play with. Look at how his traversal is strung together, it's so satisfying. And it looks like he has some light version of the Speed Force as well, cause he really seems like he's already Tracer. My biggest concern gameplay wise is the enemy types. The named villains seem great, but your typical fodder seems like just that. An infinite stream of little creatures that you kill in a couple of shots and then move on, their only threat being sheer numbers. When you're designing a system for super powered individuals and you want to give them a lot of tools, it makes sense to downplay the power levels of your open world obstacles, it builds on that power fantasy a lot, but it can also be become really repetitive and brainless very quickly. I hope that what we've seen has been just a small slice of the enemies that we're gonna face. I doubt it, I assume they're just gonna be bigger and smaller versions of this alien species, but we can hope, I guess. There is a lot riding on Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Rocksteady hasn't put out a game in over seven years, Warner Brothers' other DC game was a dumpster fire, and people are quickly getting burnt out on this whole shared world superhero stuff, given how aggressively disappointing they've all been. So far, it's shown way more promise, passion, dedication, imagination, and craftsmanship than all of its predecessors, so I hope to god it breaks the curse, but I guess we'll have to wait and see when the game finally comes out. I'm hoping for a summer 2023 release date, uh, we may even hear about it at the Game Awards in a couple of days, but in a 2023 that has a lot of games that could literally go either way, I'm really holding out hope that Suicide Squad is one of the good ones. If you enjoyed the video, leave it a like, uh, if you're new here, subscribe, join the Discord, and I will see you all next time. Peace.